a mind absolved from life, made calm to know, a heart divorced from the blindness and the pang, the seal of tears, the bond of ignorance, he turned to find that wide world failure's core. Away he looked from nature's visible face and sent his gaze into the viewless vast, the formidable unknown infinity, asleep behind the endless coil of things that carries the universe in its timeless breaths, and the ripples of its being are our lives. The worlds are built by its unconscious breath, and matter and mind are its figures or its power, O oh, waking thoughts, the output of its dreams. The veil was rent that covers nature's depths. He saw the fount of the world's lasting pain and the mouth of the black pit of ignorance, the evil guarded at the roots of life, raised up its head and looked into his eyes. On a dim bank where dies subjective space, from a stark ridge overlooking all that is, a tenebrous awakened nescience, her wide blank eyes wondering at time and form, stared at the inventions of the living void and the abyss whence our beginnings rose. Behind appeared a grey carved mask of night, watching the birth of all created things, a hidden puissance conscious of its force, a vague and lurking presence everywhere, a contrary doom that threatens all things made, a death figuring as the dark seed of life seemed to engender and to slay the world. And from the sombre mystery of the gulf, and from the hollow bosom of the musk, something crept forth that seemed a shapeless thought, a fatal influence upon creatures told, whose lethal touch pursued the mortal spirit, on life was laid the haunting finger of death, and overcast with error, grief and pain, the soul's native will for truth and joy and light. A deformation coiled that claimed to be the being's very turn, nature's true drive. A hostile and perverting mind at work, in every corner ensconced of conscious life, corrupted truth with her own formulas, interceptor of the listening of the soul, afflicting knowledge with the hue of doubt, it captured the oracles of the occult gods, effaced the signposts of life's pilgrimage, cancelled the firm rock edicts graved by time, and on the foundations of the cosmic law erected its bronze pylons of misrule. Even light and love by that cloaked danger spell, turned from the brilliant nature of the gods to fallen angels and misleading sons, became themselves a danger and a charm, a perverse sweetness, heaven-born malefice, its power could deform the finest things. A wind of sorrow, breathed upon the world, all thought with falsehood was besieged 
all act stamped with defeat or with frustration sign all high attempt with failure or vain success but none could know the reason of his fall the gray mask whispered and though no sound was heard yet in the ignorant heart a seed was sown that bore black fruit of suffering death and bale out of the chill steps of a bleak unseen invisible wearing the night's gray mask arrived the shadowy dreadful messengers invaders from a dangerous world of power ambassadors of evil absolute in silence the inaudible voices spoke hands that none saw planted the fatal grain no form was seen yet a dire work was done an iron decree in crooked unseals written imposed the law of sin and adverse fate life looked at him with changed and somber eyes her beauty he saw in the yearning heart in things that with a little happiness is content answering to a small ray of truth or love he saw her gold sunlight and her far blue sky a green of leaves and hue and scent of flowers and the charm of children and the love of friends and the beauty of women and kindly hearts of men but saw to the dreadful powers that drive her moods and the anguish she has strewn upon her ways fate waiting on the unseen steps of men and an evil and sorrow and last gift of death a breath of disillusion and decadence corrupting watched for life's maturity and made to rot the full grain of the soul progress became a purveyor of death a world that clung to the law of a slain light cherished the putrid corpses of dead truths held twisted forms as things free new and true beauty from ugliness and evil drank feeling themselves guests at a banquet of the gods and tasted corruption like a high spiced food a darkness settled on the heavy air it hunted the bright smile from nature's lips and slew the native confidence in her heart and put fierce crooked look into her eyes the lust that warps the spirit's natural good replaced by a manufactured virtue and vice the frank spontaneous impulse of the soul afflicting nature with the dual's lie the twin values wetted a forbidden zest made evil a relief from spurious good the ego batten on righteousness and sin and each became an instrument of hell in rejected heaps by a monotonous road the old simple delights were left to lie on the wasteland of life's descent to night all glory of life was dim tarnished with a doubt all beauty ended in an aging face all power was dubbed a tyranny cursed by god and truth a fiction needed by the mind the chase of joy 
was now a tired hunt. All knowledge was left, a questioning ignorance. As from a womb obscure, he saw emerge the body and visage of a dark unseen, hidden behind the fair outsides of life. Its dangerous commerce is a suffering's cause. Its breath is a subtle poison in men's heart. All evil starts from that ambiguous face. A peril haunted now the common air. The world grew full of menacing energies. And wherever turned for help or hope his eyes, in field and house, in street and camp and mart, he met the prowl and stealthy come and go of arm disquieting bodied influences. A mart of goddess figures, dark and nude, alarmed the air with grandiose unease. Appalling footsteps drew invisibly near. Shapes that were threats invaded the dream light, and ominous beings passed him on the road whose very gaze was a calamity, a charm and sweetness sudden and formidable, faces that raised alluring lips and eyes, approached him armed with beauty like a snare, but hid a fatal meaning in each line, and could in a moment dangerously change. But he alone discerned that screened attack, a veil upon the inner vision lay. A force was there that hid its dreadful steps. All was belied, yet thought itself the truth. All were beset but knew not of the siege, for none could see the authors of their fall. Aware of some dark wisdom still withheld, that was a seal and warrant of this strength, he followed the track of dim, tremendous steps, returning to the night from which they came. A track he reached, unbuilt and owned by none. There all could enter, but none stay for long. It was a no man's land of evil air, a crowded neighborhood without one home, a borderland between the world and hell. Their unreality was nature's lord. It was a space where nothing could be true, for nothing was what it had claimed to be. A high appearance wrapped a specious void. Yet nothing would confess its own pretense, even to itself in the ambiguous heart. A vast deception was the law of things. Only by that deception they could live. An unsubstantial nahil guaranteed the falsehood of the forms this nature took and made them seem a while to be and live. A borrowed magic drew them from the void. They took a shape and stuff that was not theirs and showed a color that they could not keep, mirrors to a phantasm of reality. Each rainbow brilliance was a splendid lie, a beauty unreal graced a glamour face. Nothing could be relied on to remain. Joy nurtured tears, and good and evil proved, but never out of evil one plucked good. Love ended early in hate, delight killed with pain, 
Truth into falsity grew and death ruled life. A power that laughed at the mischiefs of the world, an irony that joined the world's contraries and flung them into each other's arms to strive, put a sardonic rictus on God's face. Aloof, its influence entered everywhere and left a cloven hoof mark on the breast, a twisted heart and a strange somber smile mocked at the sinister comedy of life. Announcing the advent of a perilous form, an ominous tread softened its dire footfall that none might understand or be on guard. None heard until a dreadful gruff was closed, or else all augured a divine approach, an air of prophecy felt a heavenly hope, listened for a gospel, watched for a new star. The fiend was visible but cloaked in light. He seemed a helping angel from the skies, he armed untruth with scripture and the law. He deceived with wisdom, with virtue slew the soul, and led to perdition by the heavenward path. A lavish sense he gave of power and joy, and when arose the warning from within, he reassured the ear with dulcet tone, or took the mind captive in its own net. His rigorous logic made the false seem true, amazing the elect with holy lore, he spoke as with the very voice of God. The air was full of treachery and ruse, truth speaking was a stratagem in that place. Ambush lurked in a smile, and peril made, safety its cover, trust its entry's gate. Falsehood came laughing with the eyes of truth. Each friend might turn an enemy or spy. The hand one clasped and sleeved a dagger stab and an embrace could be doom's iron cage. Agony and danger stalked their trembling prey, and softly spoke as to a timid friend. Attack sprang suddenly, vehement and unseen. Fear leaped upon the heart at every turn, and cried out with an anguished, Dreadful voice. It called for one to save, but none came near. All wearily walked, for death was ever close, yet caution seemed a vain expense of care, for all that guarded proved a deadly net, and when after long suspense salvation came, and brought a glad relief, disarming strength. It served as a smiling passage to worse fate. There was no truce and no safe place to rest. One dared not slumber or put off one's arms. It was a world of battle and surprise. All who were there lived for themselves alone, all warred against all, but with a common hate, turned on the mind that sought some higher good. Truth was exiled, lest she should dare to speak, and hurt the heart of darkness with her light, or bring her pride of knowledge to blaspheme the settled anarchy of established 
thing. Then the scene changed, but kept its dreadful core. Altering its form, the life remained the same. A capital was there without a state. It had no ruler, only groups that strove. He saw a city of ancient ignorance, founded upon a soil that knew not light. There each in his own darkness walked alone. Only they agreed to differ in evil spots, to live in their own way for their own selves, or to enforce a common lie and wrong. Their ego was lord upon his peacock seat, and falsehood sat by him, his mate and queen. The world turned to them as heaven to truth and God. Injustice justified by firm decrees, the sovereign weights of errors legalized trade. But all the weights were false and none the same. Ever she watched with her balance and a sword, lest any sacrilegious word expose the sanctified formulas of her old misrule. In high professions wrapped, self-will walked wide, and license talked, rating of order and right. There was no altar raised to liberty. True freedom was abhorred and hunted down. Harmony and tolerance nowhere could be seen. Each group proclaimed its dire and naked law. A frame of ethics knobbed with scriptural rules, or a theory passionately believed and praised. A table seemed of high heaven's sacred code. A formal practice mailed and iron shod gave to a rude and ruthless warrior kind, drawn from the savage bowels of the earth, a proud stern poise of harsh nobility, a civic posture rigid and formidable. But all their private acts belied the pole. Power and utility were their truth and right. An eagle rapacity clawed its coveted good. Beaks pecked and talons tore all weaker prey. In their sweet secrecy of pleasant sins, nature they obeyed and not a moralist god. In conscient traders, in bundles of contraries, they did what in others they would persecute. When their eyes looked upon their fellows' vice, an indignation flamed a virtuous wrath. Oblivious of their own deep-hid offence, mob like the stone a neighbour caught in sin. A pragmatist judge within passed false decrees, posed worst iniquities on equity's base, reasoned ill actions just, sanctioned the scale of the merchant ego's interest and desire. Thus was a balance kept, the world could live. A zealot fervor pushed their ruthless cults. All faith not theirs bled scourged as heresy. They questioned, captived, tortured, burned or smote, and forced the soul to abandon right or die. Amid her clashing creeds and warring sects, religion sat upon a blood-stained throne. A hundred tyrannies oppressed and slew and founded unity upon fraud and force.
only what seemed was prized as real there the ideal was a cynic ridiculed but hooted by the crowd mocked by enlightened wits spiritual seeking wandered outcasted a dreamer's self-deceiving web of thought or mad chimera deemed or hypocrite's fake its passionate instinct trail through minds obscure lost in the circuits of the ignorance a lie was there the truth and truth a lie here must the traveler of the upward way for daring hell's kingdoms winds the heavenly route pause or pass slowly through that perilous space a prayer upon his lips and the great name if probe not all discernment's keen spear point he might stumble into falsity's endless net over his shoulder often he must look back like one who feels on his neck an enemy's breath else stealing up behind a treasonous blow might prostrate cast and pin to unholy soil pierced through his back by evil's poignant stake so might one fall on the eternal road for fitting the spirit's lonely chance in time and no news of him reach the waiting gods marked missing in the register of souls his name the index of a failing hope the position of a dead remembered star only were safe who kept god in their hearts courage their armor faith their sword they must walk the hand ready to smite the eye to scout casting a javelin regard in front heroes and soldiers of the army of light hardly even so the grisly danger passed released into a calmer purer air they dared at length to breathe and smile once more once more they moved beneath a real sun though hell claimed rule the spirit still had power this no man's land he passed without debate him the heights mission him the best desired none stood across his way no voice forbade for swift and easy is the downward path and now towards the night was turned his face a greater darkness waited a worse rain if worse can be where all is evil's extreme yet to the cloaked the uncloaked is naked worst their god and truth and the supernal light had never been or else had power no more as when one slips in a deep moment trance over mind's border into another world he crossed a boundary whose stealthy trace i could not see but only the soul feel into an armored fierce domain he came and saw himself wandering like a lost soul amid grimed walls and savage slums of night around him crowded gray and squalid huts neighboring proud palaces of perverted power in human quarters and demoniac ward a pride in evil hugged its wretchedness a misery haunting splendor pressed those fell dun suburbs of the cities of dream life their life displayed to the spectator soul the shadow depths 
of her strange miracle. A strong and fallen goddess without hope, obscured, deformed by some dire gorgon spell, as might a harlot empress in a bouge, nude, unashamed, exulting she upraised her evil face of perilous beauty and charm, and drawing panic to a shuddering kiss, twixt the magnificence of her fatal breasts, allured to their abyss the spirits fall. Across his field of sight she multiplied, as on a scenic film or moving plate, the implacable splendor of her nightmare form. On the dark background of a soulless world, she staged between a lurid light and shade her dramas of the sorrow of the depths, written on the agonized nerves of living things. Epics of horror and grim majesty, wry statues spat and stiffened in life's mud, a glut of hideous forms and hideous deeds, paralyzed pity in the hardened breast. In booths of sin and night repairs of vice, styled infamies of the body's concupiscence, and sordid imaginations etched in flesh, turned lust into a decorative art, abusing nature's gift, her pervert skill immortalized the sown grain of living death in a mud goblet poured the bacchic wine to a satyr gave the thirsts of a god. Impure, sadistic, with grimacing mouths, grey foul inventions, gruesome and macabre, came televisioned from the gulfs of night. Her craft ingenious in monstrosity, impatient of all natural shape and poise, a gape of nude, exaggerated lines, gave caricature a stark reality, and art parades of weird, distorted forms, and gargoyle masks obscene and terrible, Trample to tormented postures the torn sense. An inexorable evil's worshipper, she made vileness great and sublimated filth, a dragon power of reptile energies and strange epiphanies of groveling force and serpent grandeurs couching in the mire drew adoration to a gleam of slime. All nature pulled out of her frame and base was twisted into an unnatural pose. Repulsion stimulated inert desire. Agony was made a red spiced food for bliss. Hatred was trusted with the work of lust and torture took the form of an embrace. A ritual anguish consecrated death. Worship was offered to the undivine. A new aesthesis of inferno's art that trained the mind to love what the soul hates imposed allegiance on the quivering nerves and forced the unwilling body to vibrate. Too sweet and too harmonious to excite in this regime that soiled the being's core Beauty was banned, the heart's feeling dulled to sleep, and cherished in their place sensations thrilled. The world was probed for jets of sense appeal. Your cold material intellect was the judge, and needed sensual prick and jog and lash that its hard dryness and dead nerves might feel some passion and power and acrid point of life. A new philosophy 
theorized evil's right, gloried in the shimmering wrath of decadence, or gave to Python force persuasive speech, and armed with knowledge the primeval brute. Over life and matter only brooding bowed, mind changed to the image of a rampant beast. It scrambled into the pit to dig for truth, and lighted its search with the subconscious flares. Thence bubbling rose, sullying the upper air, the filth and festering secrets of the abyss. This it called positive fact and real life. This now composed the fitted atmosphere. A wild beast passion crept from secret night to watch its prey with fascinating eyes. Around him, like a fire with sputtering tongues, there lolled and laughed a bestial ecstasy. The air was packed with longings brute and fierce, crowding and stinging in a monstrous swarm, pressed with a noxious hum into his mind, thoughts that could poison nature's heavenliest breath, forcing reluctant lids assail the night, acts that revealed the mystery of hell. All that was there was on this pattern made. A race possessed inhabited those parts. A force demoniac lurking in man's depths that heaves suppressed by the hard human law, awed by the calm and sovereign eyes of thought, can in a fire an earthquake of the soul arise and calling to its native night, overthrow the reason, occupy the life, and stamp its hoof on nature's shaking ground. This was for them their being's flaming core. A mighty energy, a monster god, hard to the strong, implacable to the weak, it stared at the harsh, unpitying world it made with the stony eyelids of its fixed idea. Its heart was drunk with a dire hunger's wine. In others' suffering felt a thrilled delight, and of death and ruin the grandiose music heard. To have power, to be master, was sole virtue and good. It claimed the whole world for evil's living room. Its party's grim, totalitarian reign, the cruel destiny of breathing things. All on one plan were shaped and standardized under a dark dictatorship's breathless weight. In street and house, in councils and in courts, Beings he met who looked like living men and climbed in speech upon high wings of thought but harbored all that is subhuman, vile and lower than the lowest reptile's crawl. The reason meant for nearness to the gods and uplift to heavenly scale by the touch of mind only enhanced by its enlightening ray their inborn nature's wry monstrosity. Often a familiar visage studying, joyfully encountered at some dangerous turn, hoping to recognize a look of light, his vision warned by the spirit's inward eye, Discovered suddenly hell's trademark there, or saw with the inner sense that cannot err in the semblance of a fair or virile form the demon 
and the goblin and the ghoul. And insolence reigned of cold, stone-hearted strength, mighty, obeyed, approved by the titan's law, the huge laughter of a giant cruelty, and fierce, glad deeds of ogre violence. In that white cynic den of thinking beasts, one looked in vain for a trace of pity or love. There was no touch of sweetness anywhere, but only force and its acolytes, greed and hate. There was no help for suffering, none to save, none dared resist or speak a noble word. Armed with the aegis of tyrannic power, signing the edicts of a dreadful rule, and using blood and torture as a seal, darkness proclaimed her slogans to the world. A servile, blinkered silence hushed the mind, or only it repeated lessons taught while mitred, holding the good shepherd's staff, falsehood enthroned on awed and prostrate hearts, the cults and creeds that organize living death and slay the soul on the altar of a lie. All were deceived or served their own deceit. Truths in that stifling atmosphere could not live. Their wretchedness believed in its own joy, and fear and weakness hugged their abject death. All that is low and sordid sorted, mazed, all that is drab and poor and miserable, breathed in a lax, content its natural air, and felt no yearning of divine relief. Arrogant, jibing, at more luminous states, the people of the gulf despise the sun. A barriered autarky excluded light, fixed in its will to be its own grey self, it wanted its norm unique and splendid type. It soothed its hunger with a plunderer's dream, flaunting its cross of servitude like a crown, it clung to its dismal, harsh autonomy. A bullcrow bellowed with its brazen tongue, its hard and shameless clamor filling space and threatening all who dared to listen to truth, claimed the monopoly of the battered ear, a deafened acquiescence gave its vote, and braggart dogma shouted in the night, kept for the fallen soul, once deemed a god, the pride of its abysmal absolute. A lone discoverer in these menacing realms, guarded like termite cities from the sun, oppressed mid crowd and tramp, and noise and flare, passing from dusk to deeper, dangerous dusk. He wrestled with powers that snatched from mind its light and smote from him their clinging influences. Soon he emerged in a dim, wallless space, for now the peopled tracks were left behind. He walked between wide banks of failing eve. Around him grew a gaunt spiritual blank, a threatening waste, a sinister loneliness that left mind bare to an unseen assault, an empty page on which all that will could write stark monstrous messages without control. A travelling dot on downward roads of dusk, mid barren fields 
and boards and straggling huts and a few crooked and phantasmal trees, he faced a sense of death and conscious void. But still a hostile life unseen was there, whose death-like poise, resisting light and truth, made living a bleak gap in nullity. He heard the grisly voices that deny, assailed by thoughts that swarmed like spectral hordes, a prey to the staring phantoms of the gloom and terror approaching with its lethal mouth, driven by a strange will down ever down, the sky above a communique of doom. He strove to shield his spirit from despair, but felt the horror of the growing night and the abyss rising to claim his soul. Then seized the abodes of creatures and their forms, and solitude wrapped him in its voiceless folds. All vanished suddenly like a thought expunged. His spirit became an empty, listening glove, void of the dead illusion of a world. Nothing was left, not even an evil face. He was alone with the grey python night, a dense and nameless nothing, conscious mute, which seemed alive but without body or mind, lusted all beings to annihilate, that it might be forever nude and soul. As in a shapeless beast's intangible jaws, gripped, strangled by that lusting, viscous blot, attracted to some black and giant mouth, and swallowing throat, and a huge belly of doom, his being from its own vision disappeared, drawn towards depths that hungered for its fall. A formless void oppressed his struggling brain, a darkness grim and cold benumbed his flesh, a whispered grey suggestion chilled his heart. Hailed by a serpent force from its warm home and dragged to extinction in bleak vacancy, life clung to its seat with cords of gasping breath. Lapped was his body by a tenebrous tongue. Existence smothered, travailed to survive. Hope strangled, perished in his empty soul. Belief and memory abolished, died, and all that helps the spirit in its cause. There crawled through every tense and aching nerve, leaving behind its poignant quaking trail a nameless and unutterable fear. As the sea nears a victim bound and still, the approach alarmed his mind forever dumb, of an implacable eternity, of pain inhuman and intolerable. This he must bear, his hope of heaven estranged. He must ever exist without extinction's peace, in a slow suffering time and tortured space, and anguished nothingness his endless state. A lifeless vacancy was now his breast, and in the place where once was luminous thought, only remained like a pale, motionless ghost, an incapacity for faith and hope, and the dread conviction of a vanquished soul, immortal still, but with its godhead lost, self-lost and god and touch of happier worlds. But he endured, still the vain terror, war, 
the smothering coils of agony and affright, then peace returned and the soul's sovereign gaze. To the blank horror, a calm light replied, immutable, undying and unborn, mighty and mute, the goddess in him woke and faced the pain and danger of the world. He mastered the tides of nature with a look. He met with his bare spirit, naked hell.